Today we're going to be looking at a post-rotation standard with brand new cards and there's already a deck that can go infinite in a multitude of ways. That's right guys, we've got infinite combos already. First deck in standard that we're building in post-rotation in the early access event is this um, Abzan Sacrifice deck, basically. It's got food token synergies and it's got a bunch of infinite loops that you can hit with this thing. Today we hit a couple of them, um, the mill being probably the funnest and most uh, common one you're gonna see here. So basically you can mill out your opponent and go infinite on the mill with this guy right here. Scavenger's Talent is a brand new card that you bring down and it's a class, we're bringing back classes, but you bring it down for one and then every time a creature dies, you're gonna be creating food tokens, which is good for this deck because we got a lot of sacrifice. But the main thing here is the number two. When we go to level two here, whenever we sacrifice a permanent target player mills two cards. Now we are gonna wanna do that to ourselves a few times uh, because we have the ability to reanimate in this deck. We'll get to that in a moment. But really once we get the combo online, we're gonna end up milling the opponent out with that second ability because we all we gotta do is sacrifice a uh, permanent we can build the opponent. So that's where this uh, combo comes in. What we do is we got the Bartolome, which can sacrifice permanents for free. You can do it as many times as you want. That's the key role player here is getting a Bartolome down. And then you wanna get down something like the Seed Miser here. This is gonna create a squirrel every time you sacrifice a food token. Now, how are we gonna get that many food tokens to sacrifice to go infinite? Well, what if I told you everything was a food token? <laughs> Yagara, or Yagra, I'm not sure how to say it. This cat right here, turns every single creature on both sides of the field into a food token. So what you do is you then sacrifice Bartolome to any one of your squirrels or even food tokens, which then would create another squirrel. You then sack that squirrel to create another squirrel. So on and so forth and so on and so forth until you mill your opponent completely out of the game. Now, the other ways you can go infinite is if you have a Mondrak down, you can go ahead and sacrifice, let's say a food token and then create two squirrels. Sacrifice one squirrel, get two squirrels sacrifice one squirrel get two squirrels you see what i'm saying here so you're then going to go wide you can go infinite amount of times until you're wide enough that you can attack into the opponent same sort of thing here with the confectioner same idea so if you sacrifice um, a creature or what is it sacrifice a food you create a one one rat so same thing everything's a food token because of our friend here the eater of all we sacrifice a food token create two rats sacrifice a rat create two more rats and you keep doing this until you go infinitely long until your board's wide enough to attack that does require the Mondrak, which can get a little bit trickier, but the milling is a little bit easier to find. And then of course we have the uh, Knight's Quest uh, Conquest, because if we're milling ourselves out quite a bit here today and we're using the Collector's Vault to tap and put things into the graveyard because we want food tokens and treasures to sacrifice to the Conquest, and we just want to get everything down on the battlefield at one time. So that's the goal here today. Super fun list. I ran into a bunch of people running this today, so uh, not sure where it originated from, but uh, I went ahead and made my own version, of course, with Mondrak. I don't think I've seen anyone running the Mondrak combo, so hopefully you guys have some fun with this one, and uh, we'll see you at the end. Peace. All right, guys, today we are going to be trying out this sacrifice build. Um, I'm pretty excited about it, man. Do some uh, squirrel stuff, food token stuff. All right, we're definitely keeping this hand, by the way. It's too good to pass up. We've got uh, a little bit of pain land coming our way, but... Hopefully that won't be too much of a big deal. All right, we found our conquest. <clears throat> conquest is the main piece here. We'll have to start trying to fill up our graveyard though, as soon as possible. All right, uh, surveil one is good. I think I'm going to play this though and get this going right away on level two. <clears throat> All right, so they're gonna do some milling of their own. Okay, so they're running something very similar to us. Probably the same sort of deck really, but I really can't, I, I can't stand this bug that we have today in the arena where we can't see the opponent's graveyard. It's driving me nuts. All right. Getting that to the graveyard will be nice. Um, I don't have a means to do so unless I find my vault. Uh, do we care to play this or do we want to play the mentor here? Um, I'll probably just play the mentor and fill up the graveyard. I need that though.
I guess we throw it in the graveyard. I'm trying to think of how I want to play this because it is a little bit complicated. Uh, you do want those things in your graveyard because you can bring it back later with this. Um, but at the same time, you know, having that on the field to sacrifice things for free is always really solid. I do think I would be happy to make a trade here with the mentor because when it dies too, it also creates a food token. And then I might just play out a Mondrak on this next turn. Maybe. Yeah, I think I'll play a Mondrak. I don't see why not. All right, deals one damage to me. I'll save that for later. Mondrak comes down first. And then now we can go ahead and block very freely here because then we're gonna create double the amount of food tokens. And then uh, we can go ahead and hit a pretty big uh, knight's quest, but we don't have a big graveyard right now, obviously. So if we block here, that'll help get us there. If we lose Mondrak even, that's fine. We can go ahead and hit this and get it back. We will see, man. I do need to get the um, both of these cards somehow into the graveyard too, or at least like... Uh, Onto the battlefield at the same time. Camellia is on the field, which means that they're going to start creating those squirrels. They may just sacrifice that food token, it looks like, which would then create a squirrel triggering the valley and also gaining them a life, but they choose not to. Um, okay. That's fine. Let's go with... Let's go with the eater of all here. Eater of all. Let's get this on the field, which makes everything into a food token. No attacks. But what's really nice here now is I can sacrifice the mentor after I play a Camellia. This, this is about to start comboing off really hard for us, which I love to see. Oh, I can see the graveyard now all of a sudden. Nice. Man, I don't know, man. This is such a complicated deck. Uh, you know, when to sack things and, you know, bring things back from the graveyard. It gets a little, it gets a little tricky, man. I feel like we're about to go crazy right now, though. All right, that's fine. We've already got one on the field, so same sort of concept. All right, one damage to me or I can tap the land. Okay, so we're probably going to play this, right? And then we will forage. Let's forage. Which then creates two most, uh, more squirrels for me. I'm going to mill. Nice. Play the tap land. Uh, do we attack with our 10-10? Um, I don't think so. Not yet. Because we're we're kind of popping off now. Let me see what the last saga says here again. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice three other non-land permanents if you do return a target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it. That could be good. Could be good because then we can get back Bartolome, which is really the final piece we need here. But then again, I could just get it back with the Vime Reap, with the Conquest. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're chilling, honestly. I think we got the uh, final piece that we need for the uh, infinite combo here.
All right, we just got to hope that the uh, the opponent here doesn't have a sweeper. That's kind of the main thing. Um, can this be done? This can be done on anybody's turn, right? Yeah, so we can do this on their turn. So maybe I will just go with the scavenger's talent here. Sacrifice three permanents. Yeah, this will be good. We're about to go infinite, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we surveil one. Volt can go, I guess. I, I did need that, but way earlier than what we had. All right, and then we just pass the turn here, and then next turn we win the game because we're going to be able to do as many squirrel tokens as we'd like. Uh, let's see. Mill. Mill. All right, let's see what we hit with our milling. It's pretty funny that we're just trading back and forth on the 1-1 one, one counters there. All right, so we didn't hit much with the mills. Pass the turn. All right, we are about to go bananas here, guys. Absolutely bananas. These, these games are a little bit tricky though. Like I said, I'm not a big sacrifice player, so it, it gets pretty tough sometimes to try to figure out, uh, you know, how you're supposed to, you know, perform your, your triggers and stuff like that and when you're supposed to pull the trigger on stuff. Uh, but I think we figured it out, at least this game. Because with Bartolome on the field, this, this deck goes infinite. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to like not bring the attention to Bartolome here because they could obviously have some form of a kill spell here. I hope not, but um, if they kill Bartolome, we're in trouble. But I guess I could, in response, just do it a bunch of times. So there's always that possibility. I clicked on the graveyard, so it's going to take a minute for it to populate. <laughs> Okay. They're sacking a lot of their tokens here just for the life gain and food mechanics of it. Which is gaining them a, bo a boatload of life, which means I'm going to have to trigger this Bartolome a lot. I don't want to overclick my resolve button here because I've been known to skip over the point where I'm supposed to do my thing and miss out on it. Alright, see if they attack here. No attacks. My turn. All right, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to make them mill out the rest of their deck here. That's also a win con. But yeah, this is essentially infinite. Um, we're just going to take a little bit of time here to get it all done because the opponent has the ability to trigger a bunch of things here. So it's going to be a little bit of a, a bit of a time crunch here, but it's uh it is an infinite roll. So unfortunately it's going to take just a bit of time. As many times as we need to though, just keep it going, keep it going. It's, it's, I'm not gonna lie, uh, once this happens more in standard and becomes a thing, it could get a little bit annoying. I, I hate it because it is a little, <laughs> a little toxic, but, um, uh, is what it is. Alright, keep the mill going. <laughs> I feel so bad, though. I do feel bad, man. Alright, um, uh, I wouldn't- I wouldn't be upset if you wanted to just, uh, concede here. I know we're not supposed to concede on, uh, you know, these types of early access events, but, uh, in this case, I think, uh, it'd be understandable if the point did. Um, also, they are running Bartolome in their build, too, so they are running very similar builds here, so, fair enough. Uh, this is gonna be GG's. It was the first one whoever could put together the pieces to find what they need, and we just found it first. Alright.
<clears throat> okay, we finally did it. We got him all the way down to zero cards. It took a little while to get there, but uh, we got put on the clock too, which is totally fair. I get it. I mean, if, if you're wanting to do something like this in standard and this is like your game plan, it uh, it's if you're going to be that annoying like I am right now, then you got to deal with the consequences, <laughs> which is that it's going to take a long time and uh, you're going to get the rope. So GG's. All right, I went ahead and I made a couple minor adjustments to the build. I took out the Hydra, added in a bit of removal, just kind of adjusted the number of things we were running. Uh, but I think we're going to have a little bit of an easier time, hopefully finding, you know, the Conquest uh, plays. At least I hope so. So we got a couple of Surveil lands here. Uh, this is going to come in on tap next turn. So I should probably play the Lush first so we can get down the Mentor onto Curve. All right, uh, we'll keep that. Say hello. And they dropped a Ley Line. All right, let's get down the Mentor. And I guess we'll play this. That way we don't have to, you know, play it tapped it later. And then we'll attack in. We may just go with the Camellia here, just start doing some uh, sacrificing of our food tokens. Oh, there we go. That's a good find. Uh, let's see. One, two, three cost. Yeah, so let's go ahead and surveil. And, ooh, we do need that. Honestly, we don't even need the conquest again. I think we're actually almost there, guys. We're almost there. We've got pretty much everything we need. The opponent down to 11 already. Zendikar, I'm not sorry. Uh, invasion of Zendikar, two lands. Sure. Okay, and... It feels like a Bartolome is probably the move, but then again, yeah, you know what? Let's play out the Eater of All. Because it's got the ward on there, and they're going to need to play a creature and then sack the creature in order for them to kill it. So that should be lethal, unless they have a Sweeper, of course. That's not a Sweeper. This war ends today. We're just kind of playing our things out on curve here, and it's worked out pretty nicely for us. We're going to get a couple of food tokens. <laughs> You're tough. All right, and Bartolome, maybe? Yeah, let's go Bartolome, and then we'll bring everything back. Actually, we have a lethal here, don't we? Are they going to stop this? No, they're not. Okay, wow. We'll just take the take the W there. I was looking so hard at how I was going to get everything back on the field and do our thing, but I just realized we could just attack the opponent's face. <laughs> GG. Okay, we've got an interesting first hand here. Um, it's not great. I will be honest, it's not great. I'm gonna have to take a mulligan, I think, on that. Wow, it looks almost exactly the same. <laughs> I guess we got an eater of all, though, so. And the lands don't hurt me, so that's good. The curve got pretty good there with that Mondrak. Don't mind if I do. This is such a a new card and such a complicated card. I've constantly got to reread it over and over again to make sure in my head I understand what's happening. Because <laughs> whenever it's a, a creature I control dies, I create the food token. And uh, in my head, it's for some reason, I'm like, I have to sacrifice the creature. All right, let's get down the confectioner here while we can. That's fine. This is looking like a Selesnya Tokens deck, which we made as well and had a lot of fun with. Don't think we're going to have a good match here, unfortunately. Interesting. Sending everybody to get an extra two damage through. Savage. All right, we will be dropping a card.
Probably the cat. That's a bummer. I don't think I really wanted to drop the cat there, but it is what it is. Another hop to it. That's a dangerous card, man. I played it earlier today, <clears throat> and I didn't realize how crazy intense that is when it's hitting. Uh, let's get this down. Let's sacrifice one of these food tokens. No attacks. <clears throat> we can't. We can't block with the rat though. All right, things just got a little bit tougher. Are they attacking in or are they gonna... Okay, they're gonna give up two more tokens here, which is good for us, honestly. All right, we are officially, I think, in a lot of trouble here. No attacks. Uh, the good news is, though, when everything dies here, we're gonna be creating a ton of food tokens and we can get pretty much everything back with the conquest, assuming we find a land, which I, I hope ha happens, but <laughs> probably not. I don't know why they're looking at their graveyard. Ah, Season of the Burrow. Okay, I forgot it can bring something back like that. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool, man. All right, let's block, block, block. Take four. Get a bunch of food tokens. We got the land. Let's go. We got the land. Um, Eater of all plus two mentors. Is that enough? Eater of all, two mentors. That's four blockers. No, unfortunately, we still die. Hmm. We still die, but it's worth uh, still playing out here. One, two, three. Bunch of food tokens here, bunch of rats. I mean, it would have been really, really nice. Just it, it happened too late is the problem. A little bit too late. They send everybody here, they win the game. Let's hope they just don't see it. I don't know. <laughs> Highly unlikely, though. Good, good, good solid game, though. I mean, it's a tough matchup for us, I think, in my opinion. I just don't have any sweepers. If I ran, like, a Gix command, I could easily answer something like this, but we just don't. We don't have that. That's also on the field now, too, which is going to create more power, but they could have also just created more bodies, too, which would have been a, a, a nightmare. GG's, though. Okay, what do we think about this hand here? I think it's pretty solid. Taking some damage or... No, we're not. Okay. Not taking any damage here because we've got the good land. Boros is scary. Is it mice? It is mice. Okay, so that's gonna... That's gonna move pretty quickly and that's gonna hurt. So, 1-2, Valiant. Uh, whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell and ability you control... Uh, for the first time, mice you control get 1-0 until the end of turn. Okay. Good news is I got the bitter triumph, which is an instant speed spell, so I could go ahead and pop that when they try to pump a mouse. Uh, yeah, we'll just pass the turn. Probably blow up one of their mice. I would have liked to have obviously gotten the scavenger's talent up, but we're not going to have time to set anything up here. They're going to be moving very quickly. Target mouse, one own, activate only as a sorcery. Let's discard you. <clears throat> All right, and then let's get down the confectioner, I think is probably the better Play? Well, maybe not. Maybe it is actually the the Squirrel Master. Ember Heart Challenger. Okay. Let's 
thing has haste and prowess. Nice. I will definitely block. Protect my life total the best I can here. Let's get a food token. Very nice. Let's go. That's a big, big card right there for us. Um, so if we sacrifice a permanent, I can mill two cards. I say we surveil here and then we drop the confectioner. I don't see why that would be a bad idea. Confectioner is a great blocker here. Got the ability to keep spitting out food tokens. I got the king or the knight's conquest. I don't have much in the graveyard. That was the biggest problem I'm having here. Okay. A kill spell? Yeah, it's frenzy. Okay, sure. There's another food token. Oh, we found the cat. We found the cat. That's pretty solid. But I feel like the right play here would be to pull this off now because if I don't have enough blockers on the field, it's just going to be bad. So I need to get I need to go make sure I stop the go wide tactics that they got going on here. A 3-2 Haster, whenever it becomes the target of a spell and ability you control. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on it, okay. Definitely gonna go with the cat. No attacks. Alright, we've got all of our pieces down, for the most part. I mean, we can't go infinite or anything like that, but we've got... We've got all the pieces that are important down here to at least get, you know, some squirrels going. Alright, they take it up to a 5-3, which still can't get through my cat, but they might have a pump spell or something in their hand. No, they don't. Okay. Let's surveil. Definitely going to the graveyard. Okay, here's where things get a little bit tricky. I'd like to gain a little bit of life, to be honest. I know I could use this ability to um, basically forage to get the 1-1 counters, but I think I'm going to eat the first token here to gain some life. And then after we get our first squirrel on the battlefield, then I will go ahead and forge. I think that's the best way to do it. I mean, we're doing the whole squirrel thing, which is pretty awesome. I can't lie, that's pretty awesome. All right, let's get this down. I mean, a 10-10 coming through the, you know, definitely needs to be answered, right? I mean, they can't take two shots with that. They might take the first one, though. Yeah, they do. Okay. I've got plenty of blockers. I just hope they don't find a way to give trample. That's the biggest thing here. And I know there is a mouse that gives double strike or trample, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. All right, so far so good. They only have one more mana to use and they scoop it up. Let's go, dude. Good solid win right there. Didn't need to pull off any of the crazy infinite stuff, but still got the solid win with the squirrels. Okay, I definitely think I like this hand, and uh, we'll keep it. Let's go ahead and get down to the talent right away. Kind of the biggest role player in the deck I'm coming to find out is this this talent. We see is it colors here. Are we up against otters? Otters are scary. I'm not gonna lie, otters can be scary for sure. Interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and. Let's just get this down and go right into this, yeah? Seems like a decent idea. And the next turn I could surveil and I could also hold my triumph open in case they get something down that they're trying to tempo with. Like a creature that I want to blow up. Maybe we drop like the Mondrak or something. <sighs> I am glad that it's not, um... I'm glad it's not life gain, because life gain would have been a problem. 
Ooh, that's fun. That is fun. Let's surveil. And like I said, I think we're just going to hold our kill spell open. That's good. I like getting that to the graveyard because we have one in hand. All right. Let's see what happens. It is an otter. Uh, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature deals one damage to an opponent. All right, let's just discard a card and take this out. Uh, let's actually drop this. <clears throat> let's drop that. Here's the offspring. Dealing one damage to do what? Discard a card, sacrifice the land. If they do, they draw two cards. So they discard one, draw two. All right, I think I would like to get the Mondrak down. I need a way to generate some food tokens though. That's for sure. I need some food token stuff. I suppose if something dies, I get a food token, which is pretty cool, but I don't want anything I have on the field currently to die. Uh, no attacks. That's good. That means they have no pump spell trickery, which is awesome. Um, alright, that's cool, but not what I need right this moment. Um... I guess it's gonna be the Squirrel Master here. I've got all the pieces that I need <clears throat> and I want in my graveyard, but I don't have any food tokens. Looks like Modrak might be dead here, which is totally fine if that's the case. Uh, let's see, return target creature. Okay. What was the gift? Uh, tapped fish. If the gift was promised, instead return target and online permit to its owner's control. Wait. Instead return target non land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand. Okay, so it would be creature as opposed to non Okay, got it. Got it. I was trying to find out what keywords there were different. It was permanent, uh, any permanent for a creature. All right, there we go. That's a card. That is a card. All right, we get that down. And now we're cooking though, guys. Like it took a little bit to get there, but now we're officially cooking. Looks like they're gonna try to blow up one of my two creatures here. Um, probably the seed mass, uh, seed miser. Uh, it's gotta be one of the two. Oh, they're just gonna bounce it. Okay. They're just gonna bounce it. Um, well, I do wanna play this like next turn, so I think I'm gonna just. Well, never mind. I don't really need to do that, do I? Alright, fair enough. Huh. Okay. Otters are very tricky, man. I just don't know what to expect. The bounce spells were kind of uh, not what I expected. I, I did expect some burn spells, some counter spells, stuff like that, but more tempo style deck, but it looks like this is just like burn you out while I bounce everything. That's annoying how many of those they've gotten in one, t one game. <laughs> That's like super frustrating. Uh, let's, let's just say my turn here. Yeah, let's get this down. I'd love to get Mondrak down this turn, but I can't. Uh, Volcanic Spite is crazy. Sure. Jeez. Five damage every time they cast a spell is just absolutely absurd. Got the food token though. <clears throat> we'll say go.
One card left in hand. Is it some crazy nonsense? I'm going to sack a food token. That'll gain me some life here, mitigating some of the problems. And then that'll fill up our graveyard a little bit here. Give me another squirrel. Oh, they definitely have some nonsense. That's for sure. Didn't exactly hit very good, did we? Alright, that's two damage plus another five if they've got some sort of nonsense. I'm sure they do. Um, we're gonna get a lot of food tokens potentially here though, which will get us... Okay, that's fine. How do they have... <laughs> How do they have like four of those and four of these in one opening hand here? That's just... That doesn't even seem right. All right, so what do we got in the graveyard? This, this, this. I mean, we gotta just pray the opponent doesn't have, uh, a, you know, instant or sorcery speed spell that can trigger a bunch of damage. All right, so we fill up the graveyard even further. And we got plenty of blockers now, but it comes down to this. If they have one spell that's not a creature, then we lose the game. Let's go! That'll work, that'll work. Now we can start eating some food tokens. Climb our way back into this game. I cannot believe we actually have a shot at winning this one now. Genuinely cannot believe that. Um, yeah, let's just go my turn here. Mondrak? Uh, let's definitely just eat the food token here. Get myself back out of range of the opponent's, uh, nonsense with these otters. Two lands go, that's good. Uh, do we start attacking? Not yet. I don't think we attack yet. Let's just wait and see. Um, but with, well, no, I need a cat. I need to find the cat if we're going to go infinite. I need the cat. Where's the cat at? Because these are not food tokens yet, but if I sack something, I get a food token. Actually, I could go infinite here, couldn't I? I guess I could go infinite here. Because this could sack these food tokens. Getting me more... Yes, we are infinite. Wow. Okay, so there's another way we can go infinite, just like that. GG's, my friend. GG's. Let's go! We got him. We got him with the infinite combo. I didn't think we were going to hit it there. And I actually didn't realize I had all the pieces needed for it to work there. Uh, because as long as we have this on the field, creating those food tokens when a creature dies, and these three pieces here, I mean, yeah, that works out great. I don't even really need Mondrak there, do I? Because I could just sack the creature, get a food, sack the food, get a creature, sack the... Yeah, I don't really even need Mondrak there either, so that's cool. Couple ways you can get it there. That's going to do it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed the early access event and all the new cards that came with it. We got plenty more for you guys coming up later this week. We're going to be posting five videos in a row, so be on the lookout for tomorrow's video as well. We got some cool stuff lined up for you guys, but thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it very much. And uh, huge shout out to everybody who is a part of the Mardu Mob. If you guys don't know, I have a membership program on the channel. Uh, it's a little join button down below that, you know, these people help support me monetarily every month. And I just got to say my thank you to them because I appreciate you guys for being part of the Mardu Mob. I really do. And thank you for your support. But that does it for me, guys. We'll see you tomorrow on the next one. Peace out. Man, all of the time Coming with the best expert to the meta This thing